With the help of Hashem, we are learning Psachim Daf Kuf Chaf, learning the second to last Daf in Psachim. We left off on Daf Kuf Yotas Amad Beis in the second wide line by the Mishnah, Ein Maftirin Achara Pesach Afikoimen. I know these are words that we say in the Haggadah. We're going to have two interpretations of what this means of Ein Maftirin Achara Pesach Afikoimen, very important Machlaikas. And once, and we're going to explain Shita Shmuel, which is the way it's translated in our Haggadah, is that after you have the Pesach, one may not eat dessert, we're going to have in the Gemara a question, what about during the times where there isn't yet a Beis HaMikdash? Which means that we're not eating the Pesach, we're eating Matzah. Do we say that Ein Maftirin Achar Matzah Afikoimen? which is the way we paskin, that even after the matzah we have nothing else, that's the last thing that we eat, or do we say, dafke ein maftirin achara pesach? But after matzah you could eat, and I will see this far as one way or the other. We're going to be learning about what happens if someone were to fall asleep during the eating of the carbon pesach, what will be the issue of that, and what will be the din of that. We're going to apply that also, then again, falling asleep during the eating of the afikoimen, but how when people reach a certain age, they get the right, somehow, to fall asleep at the meal. Let's do it with age. We're still young, but we always witness that. Like, wow, a commitment to this, you fall asleep. Some people fall asleep in the middle of learning. No, in learning, it's freilach. In the middle of eating, you can fall asleep. And what way? It has, it has an effect. And we're going to have on the kufcha from the days, the machloikas that we kept on quoting between Rabbi Akiva and Abel Ben Azaria as to biblically until when can you eat the carbon Pesach? Right, we know from the first Mishnah that even when Hashem allows us to do things until Alois, the Chachamim said do it until Chatzois. So for sure, the carbon Pesach and subsequently the Afikoimen on the first night of the Seder, we try to eat until Chatzois, Halachik Chatzois. The question is, is that a rabbinic, or is it actually a din, Mide Oiraisa? And a lot more, Hebrew letter start, again on Daf Kuf, Yutes Amit Beis, right, second line into the wide lines by the Mishnah. So the words of the Mishnah is, and we'll speak out the Rebbe's word, why is it part of the answer to the Ben Chacham, but we say this Mishnah, that Ein Maftirin, Achara Pesach, Afikoimen. I'm not going to touch it now, because there's a Machlekes how to translate it. Now what does that mean? My Afikoimen, what exactly don't we have Maftir means concluding, that we know from the Kriya Satoira, the end, that we don't conclude after the Pesach Afikoimen. So according to how you touch the word Afikoimen, accordingly you'll know how to touch the whole Mishnah. Machleik, Rav and Shmuel. Omar Rav, the word Afikoimen is a composite of two words, Afiku Monaichu. Afiku Monaichu means moving locations. When people move locations, they took their stuff with them. Bechal, people didn't have, many times you went to a table, the host did not give you the cutlery, you came with your own cutlery. Okay, you do the seaport from the Alter Rebbe, that by Yaseide, the Alter Rebbe was so poor when he was atamled by the Magid, that he only had one cup, and it was a glass cup. It's a famous story. And, and, he, and, 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 and he did, he toiveled it, he made Hagola a few times, which is the whole question, the Svardim hold, Bechal, you don't have to cash your glass, it's never, never absorbs. The Ramah is the most Mahmer. And he holds that you can't kasher it. We, during the year, we say that do Hagala three times, but we don't do that on Pesach. And the story was is that the Alter Rebbe had only one keli. You came with your own keli. You came with a cup. And the Alter Rebbe, and the Magid was not starting the Seder. He's saying that uh, he's being told that someone has chametz here. And he sent, I forgot which one of his Talmidim, to go and to look at everyone around the table. The Alter Rebbe, who was the youngest, was sitting the farthest. And when he came to the Alter Rebbe, he tells the Maggid, here is the culprit. The Maggid tells him, my high. So he told the Maggid that uh, he, did not, he, 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 was, he did Hagala three times to his glass cup. So the Maggid says, aha, now I know, he says, the Ramah is standing by me and telling me that you cannot start to say that. Why is the Ramah here? Because the Ramah was the Mahmud. And the beauty of the story was is that the Maggid told the Alter Rebbe to sit next to the Maggid and the Alter Rebbe was given the same cup of the Maggid. They shared the same keli. But all of this is thumb to just to get the picture that in, especially in times of poverty, it was common that you came with your own kalim to a meal and if you moved locations, you took your kalim with you. So Rav teaches that the mis- meaning of the Mishnah is Shaloya Akru Mechabura Lechabura. 
Now, let's go back. When you have the carbon Pesach, this is a din of Pesach, not of a Seder, that we, we will follow the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda that says that the carbon itself, Lechatchila, can be divided amongst different groups. Just because we were all registered on the same animal, it doesn't mean that we have to all eat together. But once we sat down to eat with our Chabura, one may not change locations. Remember, that was a din of Rabbi Yehuda. And now, so says, let's read inside the Rashbam beautifully, right? That's already, let's go into the last narrow line, going into the first line under the Gemara. That we learned above in Ketzat Tzayla, and he's quoting Shittas Rabbi Yehuda, the Pesach is allowed to be eaten, the animal itself can be divided into Chaburis. But the Ein Ha'oichel, Oichel HaPesach B'Shtei Mekoymais. Now, Fahach Mil Soderav, Oik Mehosom, Bishas Achila, that while we are still eating the meal, while we are still eating the meal, and Rav holds, you may not change locations. Not you're changing locations to eat Pesach. That we know you can't do. I can only eat the Pesach in my group. But I can tell myself, I already ate the Pesach. According to Rav, according to Rav, one is allowed to eat any food after you ate the carbon Pesach. In other words, we don't touch a maftirin. When people learn the Haggadah, Halavai, they should know what they're saying. But when they, t- when they read over there the translation, we don't touch it like Rav. Rav holds is that you are allowed to eat dessert. You can eat food after the Afikoim, after the Pesach, but you have to eat it in the same location. During the meal, don't change locations. Avol la'achar achila yochal li'okar lo'imer halol bechabur acheres. It's very important. Now, even according to Rav, the way he understands Rabbi Yehuda, you can, after your bench, you can go anywhere. Actually, many hold that the source of opening up the door for uh, Elio Anavi, aside of the fact that's the whole sugi of Zuga, is that when we open up the door and we see the street, so we don't have four cups, we have three and one. Aside of that is because then, according to the way Rav especially understands the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda, whom we paskin like, when we're having the Pesach, we're stuck to our table. And you have to bench. But after you bench, then you can go out. Then you can go and you can, you know, you can get some fresh air. So that's exactly why people do it. Let's read inside the second line in the Rashbam under the, under the Gemara. That's important. So the words afikoimen is not dessert. One may not move your eating utensils to another group during the meal. Again, even though you're not going to eat the Pesach, you know you're not going to eat the Pesach. I just want to have a cup of tea with the other group. I want to have my dessert with the other group. Raf says, don't do it. Why may you not do it? Because if you sit down in another table with another Chabura, you might accidentally end up eating part of their carbon Pesach. And that is what you're not allowed to do. So as a Gzeda, no food in another location. Okay? So that's the Afi, afi Koimen. Apiku Monaichu. Don't, even though you ate the Pesach, don't change locations. Back inside, that's Rav. However, Shmuel Amar, Shmuel is more known by us. Shmuel says, no, that the word Afikoimen means dessert. And what the Mishnah is saying is that after you eat the carbon Pesach, don't eat anything else. Don't even eat dessert. Because we want for the Tam of the mitzvah of Pesach to remain in our mouths. Ah. And, and, and he's giving, he's not saying Afikoyim means dessert, he's just giving examples. Kegoin, now Shmuel, after he ate, normally would eat mushrooms. That was his dessert. Rav would eat pigeons. Imagine, dessert. That was the dessert of Rav. So he says, no, Afikoyim means oir di lo'i li. That's like what mushrooms is for me. It's like goizlaya, young pigeons, and here he calls them Abba. Again, that's the whole question. Did he call him by his name? Or did he use the word Abba? He was Abba Richa. But did he use the word Abba as a, an expression of covet and of closeness? But that refers to Rav. Rav Hanina, Rav Shila, Rav Yechanan, they hold, keep going, other examples, all about dessert. It's like tamarim, dates, kaloyos, toasted grains, the egoism, walnuts. That's the meaning of Afikoimen. Don't, I don't, it's not about here or there. It's not about changing locations. Is that one may not eat anything after you finish, after you finish the carbon pesach. Tain kavas the Rabbi Yechonon, which is also like Shmuel, that hey, after the nachar pesach says the brayser kigoyin, not don't eat over there. No, kigoyin tamarim kolois vegoizim. All right. So now that we we're gonna go now bishita Shmuel, bishita Rabbi Yechonon. 
So now we have a new question, and that question is that instead of saying post-temple, we have to change the way we speak. Pre-temple, right? Mashiach is about to come. Before Mashiach comes, when we don't yet have a carbon Pesach, do we apply the din of the Mishnah to Matzah? What about, are you mafted achar matzah afikoymen or not? So we have in the Gemara two versions of what Shmuel said. One the opposite of the other. So the first version is, Amrav Yodam HaShmuel, Ein maftiren achar matzah afikoymen. For the same concept. That after you have the matzah referring to what? Referring to what we call the afikoymen. Referring to the, uh, you know, to the matzah that we have from Yachatz. That after that, don't eat anything. Now here we have a very important Rashbam. Many of the argue. We're going to learn the Gemara Beshitas Rashbam. Look inside the Rashbam, seven lines before the bottom of the Amit. Ein maftiren achar afikoimen. Just to know, the word afikoimen, again, means dessert. Even though you have to understand how things evolved. We call the Yachatz Matzah afikoimen. But you know why we call it afikoimen? Because afikoimen means dessert, according to Shmuel. And since we don't eat dessert after that matzah, so we call it dessert. Oh, so he says like this: Shetzorech lechol matzah b'gmar sudasoi, zeicher la matzah hanechelas ma pesach b'kericha, and vezu he matzah habetzua. This is the broken matzah. Shano oichlam b'achroina l'shem choiva. Wow! Which matzah is the matzah for which we fulfill the mitzvah of eating matzah, says the Rashbam? Not the matzah that we ate when we made the hamoitzi and asher kedishonu and mitzvahs of mitzvah no lechel matzah. There's a machloikas about this. We're learning the Rashbam. The real mitzvah is eating what we call the afikoimen. So now hold on. If that's the case, why don't we make the bracha before we eat the afikoimen? We should make the hamoitzi in the beginning of the meal, of course. But why don't we make the Asheik and the Shonav and Mitzvah when we eat the Afi Koimen? So we go back to what we learned on the Kuf Tezvav. Says that Ashbam Ba'al Korcheinu Wanu Mevarcham Alachilas Matzah Barishoyinu Afapi Ah, guys, you can dance from these words. She'einu L'Shem Choyva. Learning new things. According to the Rashbam, the first matzah is not a choyv. So why don't we make the bracha later? Ah, because we had Rab Chizda that just taught us regarding the murder. Remember that whole this topic, if you had uh, the only vegetable good for the karpas was the same one that's good for murder, chazeres. That, that Rabbi Chizda says, what, if you already got satisfied by eating that, what, only later will you make the bracha? Right? Therefore says the Rashba, Mivarech Atarvayu Beresha. Atarvayu means, not only do we make the hamoitzi, in the beginning of the meal, but we also say that Asher Kedishon of Mitzvah Sevitzivonu Alachilas Matzah in the beginning of the meal. But when are we really fulfilling the mitzvah? Chavre by Yahab, what we call the Afi Koimen, the Matzah of Yachatz. Gavaldik. So says this version of Rabbi Huda Marshmol. And since this is the Choyva, and therefore it's connected to the Karban Pesach, that's the key, because the Karban Pesach was eaten together with Matzah. So, so, just like the Mishnah says, Ein maftiren achar Pesach afi koimen, so before the Beis HaMikdash is built, tragically, we don't have yet a carbon Pesach, but we have the matzah, which is Zecher le Pesach. So because of that, we also don't eat any dessert after that matzah choiva. And again, it's like a borrowed term. So now we call that afi koimen. Okay, says the Gemara. Now we're going to have a couple of challenges, a couple of proofs. Tanan, this is a question against this version of Shmuel. It says in our Mishnah, So why are we not Medayik? Right, don't forget, especially the Mishnah. The Mishnah was written, was compiled after the Khurban, pre the third base Amigdash. So the Mishnah should have said, But it doesn't say that. The Mishnah only mentions Pesach. So why are we not Medayik? Yes, Maftirin. L'choyre, the Mishnah is excluding matzah. Says the Gemara, no, lav dafke, not a kasha, because I'll learn the Mishnah on the way of loy mi boye ka'amar. Right, loy mi boye, achar matzah, deloy nafesh tamayo, matzah doesn't have such a strong taste. So of course you should not eat any dessert. We don't even drink anything after the matzah because we don't want 
for the taste of the matzah to leave our mouths and it e- leaves easily. But one might have thought that if you are eating the carbon Pesach, since meat, the nafish time, it has a very strong taste, right? The loy matze avura, loy matze means not you can't, it, you cannot easily remove it. And by the way, that's the homachloik is between Rashi and the Rosh regarding why do we wait the six hours, well, we wait six hours between the meat and the milk. Why do we wait? Like biblically, Basar B'chalav is not to cook it and eat that which was cooked. Not have another that which was cooked. But we don't eat it together. We not make a half second zman. Is it because of the digestion? Or is it because of the tam in the mouth? That's it. Because when you have meat, it stays in your mouth for a long time. So one might have thought, lay slamba. So the Mishnah is machadish. Even after the Pesach, you can't have a dessert. But, the, but of course, after the matzah, ein maftirin, Achad Pesach refers to the matzah. Now we're going to have, and we couldn't refute Shmuel, now we're going to try to bring a siyuah to Shmuel. Second to last line of the Amit. Neymah Mesayeli. When it says in Abraisa regarding matzahs that are not valid for the mitzvah of matzah. Now either the problem is going to be that it's not lechem, there's a lechem oini. Lechem is something whose dough is doughy and not liquidy. That's another rule. Like why do we make a mazoinus and not a hamoitziyam cake has to do also with the batter. So if you have matzahs that were called sufganim, right, sufganiyot, sponge matzahs, it's an issue in the lechem. But hadufshanim, is, the issue is not with the dough, but when you add it, honey to it, it's no longer honey, honey, not oini, it's not poor, it's wealthy. So that's why it's not good for the mitzvah of matzah. Or voho is, voho is keritin, Way for matzah. The issue is with the batter. And these are all different types of matzahs that for one reason or the other, they're not valid for the mitzvah of matzah. Says the B'raiseh, You can eat it in the beginning of the meal. And you have to eat it at the end. Now, why are we eating it at the end? Now, guys, let's go back to how Shmuel. Shmuel is saying, like, we're following the Rashbam. According to the other Rishayim, it's a whole different Gemara as always. Being that Shmuel's predicated on the Afikoimen being the mitzvah. And after you fulfill the mitzvah, it's after that that you may not eat anything. So L'choyda Adarab the Bryce is trying to tell you that the matzah should be eaten at the end. But Achroina, eat it at the end. Daf Kuf Chav. But Bereshoina, loy. Why Bereshoina loy? Because if you were to eat the real matzah in the beginning, then you would not be allowed to eat anything afterwards. You want to have a whole meal. So begin the meal, you have to make hamoitzi. Fine, use that which may not be eaten for mitzvah's matzah. Because after you eat the mitzvah, you can't eat food. Ein maftirin achar hamatzah afikoimen. Says the Gemara, again, there's no proof. Loi mi boi really, we should eat matzah in the beginning. Loi mi boi but it's actually better even according to the Rashitas Rashbam and the others that hold that the real mitzvah is the matzah we eat at the end, the afikoimen. But still, when you make hamoitzi, we start with halachically kosher matzah. Why? Because of that which we began in Arvei Psachim, the concept of eating a mitzvah when you have appetite, mitzvah mina mufchar, the ka'achal oven. Avol one might have actually thought that you may not eat the matzah at the end. Why? Because Dilma Asilamechalachilagasa, because you might be so satisfied from the Shulchan Oirich that that which you are eating is called excessive consumption. And uh, we quoted the Rabbeinu Tam that holds it's not only that mitzvah mina mufchar, but if a person is so stuffed that if what they eat is something that they, they, are, they are disgusted by, it's not even called eating. So, Ema, you may never eat the matzah at the end. So, the Brais is telling you that you may eat it at the end. And as the Rishonim speak out something very important, just connecting it to the beginning of our Beb Sachem. And that is like this. If I'm having a meal Friday out of Shabbos, out of Yantiv, there we are afraid that the person will eat so much that they'll end up opening up Suda Shabbos Yantiv or eating the matzah, they're gonna be a, it's going to be a chilagasa. Why? Because a person will say to themselves, ah, I'm only eating 4 p.m. By the time the meal comes, I'll already be hungry again. So they're not careful to limit what they eat. They're stuck as such a fear. That's why we have all of those shittas that said that every end of Shabbos and Yom Tev, after a certain time, whatever the, which, the first b'raisa, the second b'raisa, don't have a meal. Masha'en can, during the su'uda of the Seder itself, everyone will make sure that they leave room for the mitzvah. Marzutra, Masni, Hachi, now we're going to have the opposite version of what Shmuel said, and everything we had will be in the opposite. His version was that Hachi Amar Rabbi Yosef, that Mazutra Masni Hachi, that Amar Rabbi Yosef, Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, 
Punkt verkehrt. Yes, Maftir in Acher Matzah Afrikaimen. And we're, we're following Shitas Rashbam. The main mitzvah of Matzah is the, what we call the Afrikaimen. And he actually said that after you eat the Afrikaimen, you are allowed to eat. You can eat whatever you want. Now, Fakert, whatever, before what was Akasha, now becomes a Lema Misayeya. What before was a proof, now becomes Akasha. Name a Misayeya, lay from our Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Eimaftirin Achar HaPesach Afikoymen. Bimedayik, says the Gemara. Achar HaPesach is when you may not eat anything, which Takel is telling, implying, after Matzah, you are Maftirin. So the Gemara says, it's not a Raya. It's not a proof, because one can argue, Loi mi boya ka'amar, Loi mi boya achar matzah, De loi nafish tamay, Its taste is not strong. So if you will eat anything afterwards, you will nullify the tam of the matzah, which is what we do not want to do. So for sure, don't eat anything after you ate the matzah that we call the afikoyim. Abel achar matzah achla pesach meat. Since, as we mentioned, meat, actually the taste lingers in the mouth. So therefore, you might think that you may eat anything after you eat a carbon Pesach. So the Mishnah has to tell you, even after the Pesach, don't do so. And now the Braisa, instead of it being a siyua, against this version will be a potential kasha. Ah, it says, hasuf ganim, sponge matzes, v'haduf shonim, honey matzes, v'ho is keritin, and wafer matzes, matzes that are either not lechem or not honey, and therefore they're not good for the mitzvah of matzah, odom emalik reisemehen, as long as she yoichel kezais matzah ba'achroina, and again, l'chuura, the kasha here was ba'achroina in, but b'rishoina loi, because if you were to eat real matzah in the beginning, fakert ein maftiren achar matzah, afikoimen, so then you won't be able to eat, so the Gemara says, Laimi Bayi Ka'amar. That Laimi Bayi Barishayna, that yes, you can eat it and you should eat the matzah, even according to the sheet of the Rashbam, the Iker Mitzvah is at the end. But L'Teyavayin is what we begin with. The Ka'achal L'Teyavayin. Avul Ba'achrayna, but you might have thought that you may not leave the matzah for the end. Because then, the Asi Lamech Lachil Agasa. E Moloi, Komash Molan, like we explained, that in the same meal, a person will make sure that they leave enough room to have the afikoimen in a way that it's not called excessive consumption. They're not going to be hungry, but it's, they're going to eat it. So that's amazing. Okay. The poil mamish, exactly like we mentioned, we do both. We eat it in the beginning, and we eat it at the end, and according to the Rashbam, we make the Ashekidishon of Why? Because even though the Iker Mitzvah is at the end, we follow up Chizda, how can you eat Matzah and then later make the Bracha? It's not nice. And Noch, we had done the previous daf, Mitzvahs, Birchas and Mitzvahs should be done over La Asiyasan. So you make the Bracha before. And, but you have to, there's an Indian of eating Matzah, eating Matzah at the end. Just to share a word of the Rebbe and the Haggadah, that why is it that to the Ben Chacham, to the Ben Chacham, the last thing that we, we uh, what do we tell him? Ein maftir and achara pesach I mean, the Pshad is simple. The Pshad is we're learning Pesachim. Now the truth be told that we still have two more Mishnayas. But uh, to the Ben Chacham, you teach the whole Mishnah as Pesachim until and included Ein maftir and achara pesach that's one, that's the pshat. The Rebbe explains like this based on our Gemara, especially according to the Rashbam. Matzah is bitl. Tam, dessert, it's very tasty. And fakert, uh, now we appreciate better in the previous daf. It's mushrooms and it's pigeons. Like, what are they debating about? And they're having a toasted grain. What are, what are all these things? So you have the initial Kabbalah soil, the Moida Ani Funayid. That's matzah. You begin, you begin with bitl. But then there is a place for a person to understand. Chabad. And for a person to feel. It, it should be metak gishmak. And l'choyre, every amoyre who's eating another dessert, it's really bepnimius. It's that type of tam that they imbued with the Yiddishkeit. But how do we end? We end with a, a much higher level of bitl. So in sandwiched in between the matzahs is where you're supposed to have tam. So that's the, the Chacham, Fakert Akash of the Chacham is, why do we Bichal have to have Eidus and Chukam and Mishpatim? It's all Kabbalah soil, it's all the same. It's Alz de Zelbezach, that's the Kash of the Ben Chacham. So you tell the Ben Chacham that you take a right, you begin with Bittol, and you're the right that at the end of the Avoidah, Soif Dara Kol Nishma, that it's all El Akim Yira, but there is a, in between that, it's that God wants for us to understand. And when we are trying to understand, then we'll see that there's Chukim and there's Eidus and there's Mishpatim, Vichulay Vichulay. Okay, two dots. Says the Gemara Vaiter. Yes. Just to clarify, the second uh, uh, opinion, our Zutra's explanation, Shmuel, Shmuel is now the same as Rab, right? No, 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 no. 
because Raf teaches the word afikoimen as moving locations. It, it, Shmuel is not addressing that. Shmuel is not, either way, is not addressing yeah, that. There would, there would be an agreement that you could eat stuff after, after afikoimen. There would be an agreement, correct. That's correct, Danny. There would be an agreement that you can eat stuff after after Kremen. Correct. After matzah. Correct. Okay, it's just to remember, we're learning to get to Gavaldic to Chapit. You can have your whole life. Afikoimen, Afikoimen. Afikoimen is not that. That's matzah. Afikoimen means dessert. You're calling that dessert because according to this version of Shmuel, you may not eat dessert after it. So may call this dessert. It's a shame Hamushal calling that matzah Afikoimen. Okay, Omar Rava, Chavira, let's go. Now again, these are these are sugis that we spoke out. We already quoted this above. Is is Marer look pre Moshiach, pre Temple, pre the third base Amigdash is for sure made Rabbanon because the pasuk that we have in Parshas Baha Loischal Matzos Umaroidim Yochluhu the Pesach with it. So when you have a Pesach, then you have to have Matzos Marer. Marer is Bismanazel bin Rabbanon. What about Matzah? Remember, we just had a few daf ago. And, and look, we link that if matzah is man azez midrabanan, we don't pass in that way, then the whole mitzvah of sipur yitzias mitzrayim is also midrabanan. Now here the Gemara is not going to focus on the mitzvah of sipur, but we're going to focus on the machloikas, whether matzah pre-Mashiach is midoiraisa or midrabanan. Omar Rav, matzah is man is the oiraisa. It's only the marer is that's the rabbanan. Question is, why? Frank the Gemara, why no marer? I know why marer is midrabanan. Because since it says in Baalois Chal, matzah is umeroidim yechluhu, so we link matzah and marad with the carbon pesach for which we expound, we darshan. Ah, bezman dikar pesach. Then biblically there is an obligation to eat marad. But and during the times right before Mashiach, the like a pesach, then biblically there's no marad. And that's taka why marad bezman azaz mid rabbanan oi bazoi kashan rava. Matzah should be the same thing. Nami yoksiv a matzah sumeroidim. Yoichlu. So answers the gemara, you're right. If we only would have had that Pasuk in Baloischa, then Matzah would have only been before Mashiach, Midr Abanan. But by Matzah, Mi Hadr Hadr Beikra. The Torah then goes and re includes it. And we're going, that's a Gemara, we're going so out of the Seder of the, of the Chumash. So we're going from Baloischa, excludes it. But then the Torah brings it back in, we're jumping back to Bai. It says, Ba'erev Toichlu Matzah. There the Pasuk does not mention anything about carbon Pesach, which means that independent of the Pesach, Ba'erev Toichlu Matzah. Atkan Shitas Rava. Who argues with Rava is Rav Acha Bar Yaakov. And he taka holds that Echot Zev, Echot Zev. Before we have a carbon Pesach, is only the Rabbanon. I Elohok Siv Rava just quoted the pasuk about of Toichlu Matzos answers Rav Acha Bar Yaakov Ah Who Mi Boyele That's coming to teach you Bizman Sheein Beis Amikdash Kaim Guys According to him It's always made the Rabbanon But let's now go to Zman Habayis Bizman Habayis There were people that were halachically exempted of eating the carbon Pesach For example the Tamei or the Shehoi Bederech Rechayka That they are not to bring the Pesach Rishon Bizman Habayis are they obligated then at least to have matzah in the night of the Seder? The Salka died to Hamin, if not for the Torah writing in Parsha's boy, a stand alone, independent, but out of Toichlo Matzah, I would have thought, given the Pesach Lo Yachal this Yid, because he's Tame, he's with Arach Rechoika. So then maybe Matzah Umarar Namin Nechal, so Kamash Malan, guys, the Kamash, Kamash Malan, this doesn't go on the Marar, it goes on the Matzah. That he's obligated biblically to have matzah, but bezman shal beis hamikdash kaim. Masha enkin before the third beis hamikdash during the times of Galus, that just like mother is made rabban and so was matzah. I verava, rava tells you that tamei v'shoy b'darach rechayka loitzarach kara. This is not written for that case. I, I already know that he's obligated biblically to eat it. How? Because he? Why would he be worse to loit gadi from a adol? Or from a ben nechar, and then the trader writes in parshas boy call order lo yoy chal boy, and the word boy is extra. And Chazal expound boy eino achel that a adol can add eat in the pesach avol achel matzu mother. Again, just to know, according to most rishonim, even the mother here is midrabanon. Mother is only with the pesach. Oh, 
So since the trader was already Megale, that even Bisman Abayas, Bisman Abayas, that the one who's exempted from a Pesach is obligated to eat matzah, I already know, I would know on my own that a Tomei, that a Chrechoik is also Mechoyev, Midoy Raisa, to have the matzah. So by Ed of Toichlu Matzah, is going Bisman, She'en Beis Amikdosh Kai. Now the Idach, which is Rabbi Chabar Yaakov, will tell you, know that the trader needed to write both by the auto and another specific Pasuk of the Ed of Toichlu Matzah is for the Derech Rechoyke, for the Tomei Derech Rechoyke. Ksiv Bahai, Ksiv Bahai, and Vitzrichem. And as the Rashbam, five lines from the top of the Amid, right, we had this Gemara on Daf, Daf Koyach, on Daf Chav Ches, but he repeats the Gemara. We, it's a, let's read it inside the Rashbam. Ksiv Bahai, Ksiv Bahai, Tzricha. That what? That the Tomei Vishroye, but Derech Rechoyke says, the Gemara says that Rashbam here, lo yalef mi aru le ben Nechol. It's, yes, a aru le ben Nechol, that they are obligated to eat matzah biblically, even though they are not bringing in the carbon Pesach, that is something that we in the Torah 100%. But we never would have learned the Tomei and the Rechoyka because they can bring the Pesach Sheni. They will bring the Pesach Sheni. So one would have thought, why eat matzah now? Wait until when you bring the carbon Pesach. Then you'll eat taka, the Pesach Sheni with matzah and mortar. And if not for the Torah, Nachamol writing explicitly that Be'er of Toich Lomatzos, according to Rav Acha, is that even, even by the Pesach Rishon, when you are not bringing it, even though you know you will bring the Pesach Sheni, so then nevertheless you have to have Matzah. And by the way, the Odal is not someone who sinfully, only someone who with a sin is not circumcised, because him you can also argue, let him make a Bris Milo and he'll have Pesach Sheni. The Odal is a Yid that is not allowed to do a Bris Milo. When he had two older brothers and the circumstance did not yet change, and Allah we say that if the two brothers died because of the Milo, he may not circumcise himself. He also may not bring the carbon Pesach. He will not have Tashlumen. V'chulei, v'chulei. So the Torah, according to Rabbacha, needed to write it twice. Okay, says the Gemara. Now, Machloikis, but Tanya Kavosei the Rav. That what? That Matzah B'zman is Mido Eiraisom. Why is that? Because it says in the Kol HaVachar, Revita Sanyant of Parsha Sre'ei, so we mentioned there all the Yomim Toivim, including starting with Pesach. Sheishes Yomim Toichal Matzis. Right? That's the big kasha. What do you mean, Sheishes Yomim Toichal Matzis? It says in Parsha's boy, Shivas Yomim Toichal Matzis. Seven days eat Matzis. There it says, six days eat Matzis. And then it says, the seventh day, this is referring to the seventh day of Pesach. Ve'yem ha-shvi atzeres l'ashem alikach. Atzeres pshat means that you may, you may not work. You have to stop Withhold yourself from Asiyah's Malacha. The seventh day is Yom Tif. But we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on the fact that it says for six days eat matzahs, which implies that there's no mitzvah to eat it on the seventh day. And indeed, so the, the, the Braiser says that the seventh day, it's not that, listen, we're not allowed to eat hummus, God forbid, but we're not obligated to eat matzah. Because it only says for six days and not the seventh day. So, Mashvir shoes. So now we have, this is the eighth mid of the Yud Gimel Midas. That now that God was Megali, that the last day of Pesach, you're not obligated. It's a Rishus. It's a it is discretionary. It's optional. Another nuance, not optional, that you're not fulfilling a mitzvah. You are connecting to God. And all of the qualities that we mentioned, Michla de, de, de Mehemnusa and Michla das Fos is during the entire Pesach. It's mainly the first night and the second night. But you're not obligated. Mashri the shoes. So af sheshis yomim is also the shoes. We're not obligated to eat matzah other than in the night of the Seder, as the, as the Braise points out. Now, how do you know that? The Pasik from Parsha Re'e is only excluding the seventh day. My Tama. So that's the eighth cloud. That's the eighth mida. That's called Davar Shahoya Bachlau. When God writes in Boy, Shivas Yomim, Shivas Yomim Toichel Matzas. All the seventh day. And here the Torah is excluding the seventh. So something that was part of a klal. And the yotzim in a klal, the lamed, and it was excluded. And you want to learn something from that exclusion. It, it itself was not the only one being excluded. Which that's Megali, that not only is the seventh day the shoes, but the whole Shivas Yomim, Yomim, Toichal Matzah is not an obligation, it's a Rishus. So, Oibazo, Yochel, Af, Lailo, Rishon, Rishus. Maybe you're never obligated to eat Matzah, no. Talmud Loimer, Al Matzah is Umeroidim Yechluhu. Al Matzah is Umeroidim Yechluhu. Guys, this is the Pasuk in Baal 
And that is, you're obligated to eat it. But this Pasuk in Baal is bringing the Chiyuv only together with the Pesach. But Bizman Shabbat Shalom is saying the Shkayim before Mashiach, Minayin, that you are also Mechoyev Mido Eiraisa to eat Matzah. That's the Talmud Leimu Be'er of Toichlo Matzahs, that HaKosav Kavoi Chayva. So it's beautiful. So Matzah is Mido Eiraisa. The Void of Bittol is Mido Eiraisa. The Void of Merirus. It depends. And that's the whole theme of Hasidim. That Meridus, you have to be careful. Right? That's the exception in Tanya. If you have Tim to Malev, then you have to... And it's Midr Abonan. Golos is bitter enough. Dafke Bizman Abayis. There we are certain that the Meridus is not going to make you depressed. Says the next Mishnah. Now we're going to the second to last Mishnah. And it's relevant for today. It's, it's a Ruch Nyesdika Mishnah. Falling asleep in the middle of the Seder. That's Ruchnia, Beruchnia, Sayyid can fall asleep in the middle of Golos. What status does that have? And we're only sleeping. The heart is always awake. Says the Mishnah of Benigla, Yashnu Miksosam, if some of the group fell asleep in the middle of eating the Pesach, nevertheless, Yoichelu, they are allowed, the guys who wake up can continue eating. What's the topic? What's the issue? Who cares if, you know, you reach that age that you earned falling asleep on this table? Says that Ashbam, Oh, one second. Yashnu kulon. If everyone falls asleep, then lo yoichelu. Why lo yoichelu? Let's read the Rashbam. That im his chalechel pischan. We're speaking about Pesach. And the Yashnu. So lo yoichelu. If everyone around the table falls asleep, no more eating carbon Pesach, which is terrible because it's not noiser. Because, says the Rashbam, the nira ka'oichel pischai bebeis mekoimois. As we just quoted, the Shita Sarebi Yehud, you can't eat your Pesach in two locations. So when you check out through sleeping, even though you came back to the same place, it's a Naya place. Midrabanan, this is Midrabanan. So when you eat again, it's like you move the location. The Ma'achar, she Yashnoi, let's read it up. Since you fell asleep, he si chudaton lechol oid. Sleeping is a Hesachadas, it's a disconnect. And the Choshev Leitane, ke Achila Shnei Mekoimois, and the Chumra Ba'almohu. This is not a Midoy Rais. However, let's say my heart, but if some of the people are awake, if some, and they did not have Esachadas, so let's say, so therefore they are Megale, that no one had Esachadas. So during Golos, even if one yid falls asleep, we got to make sure that someone stays awake. If everyone falls asleep, then you get into trouble. Now, do we apply this to matzah? Yes, we do. We'll see that and we'll see that soon. That's However, Rabbi Yossi Oymer, now we're going to learn Rabbi Yossi Lashitas Rashbam to the exclusion of many others. Rabbi Yossi is even more machmer that even when only some people fell asleep, which is when we don't have this Chumrah, since some stayed awake, everyone is allowed to eat the Pesach, that's only if Nisnam Nemu, only if the sleep is called a dozing sleep, not a real sleep, they only dozed off. And again, the Rashbam writes, all of this is uh, going on the Resha. That even, the, even when do you allow people to keep on eating? Only if it was mitzvah, and even that, the ones who slept cannot sleep. They can only doze off. But near the move, but if the mamas geschlafen, then lo yoichelu. And the Gemara will define the definition of dozing versus sleeping. Normally, people that fall asleep on the Shabbos table, they say they're only dozing. Only dozing. Okay, so that's number one. And really, what Rabbi Yossi is saying about is that Yid never even sleeps. It's as a dozing off. Din number two on the Mishnah. And that's based on a Dirabanon. And we had this before, we quoted this before. That Midrabanon, both Pigul and Noisar, are Metame es Hayodayim. Which means that they make your hands a Shani. Which means that if you touch Truma or Kachim, you're going to passel the Truma and you'll be Metame the Kachim. So says... Now, the question is, from when is the Pesach Noisar? So that's really the, the issue. Says the Mishnah, second line, now Pesach after Chatzois is already Noisar, which means you must finish the Pesach. You only can begin from when it gets dark. And after Kiddush. And after the Seder, the whole Megillah until we get there. The whole Haggadah. And until when? Only until Halachic Midnight. Because after Halachic Midnight, it's already Metama Yodayim. It's a Tumah Midrabanan, as we have the rule, right? The third line, that HaPigul and HaNoiser, Midrabanan is Metama Nesla Yodayim. 
Okay, so now we're going to, the Gemara will begin with the first, with the first part of the Mishnah. When Rabbi Yossi says, Lashitas Rashbam, he's being Mahmer over the Tanakama, that even when it's only Miktsasan, so the ones who slept, when they wake up, they could eat, it's only if they dozed off. Nisnam Nemu, only then Yoichelu, but if near Nemu, so then Lo Yoichelu, this is a quote of Rabbi Yossi, asks the Gemara, let's define and here it's not about how long, right? When it comes to until you die in, right? That's we pass in 30 minutes. Based on Dovra Melech sleep. He never slept for 30 minutes. But here it's a whole different definition. Hechi Domin Nisnam name, Omar of Ashi. That Nisnam name means, dozing means nim veloinim. Asleep, but not asleep. Tir, awake, but not awake. Which means Kigoin. The Karule, if you call out to the person, will answer. But he's unable to respond with a svara. And specifically, the Rishayim speak out that if you ask a person, where did you leave that item? He's not awake enough to respond where. But the moment, the key, mat but if you remind him, did you leave your keys on that shelf? He'll know to answer yes or no. Then mitkar. That's enough awake. That's called dozing. And indeed, a story, Abaye was sitting in front of Rabba, his adopted father and his teacher. And Chaza Abaye saw the Kanam name that Rabba was dozing off. And clearly, as the Rishonim point out, this happened before Mashiach. This happened when there was no Beis HaMikdash. So they're not, we're not speaking about eating the carbon Pesach. Here we're speaking about eating Matzah. And the, what's very important is to link it to the previous Sugya. We're speaking about the Matzah that's in the place of the Pesach. And we're speaking according to the Rashbam, the matzah of the Afi Koyman. So at the end of the meal, he was dozing off while they were eating the, what we call the Afi Koyman. So Amalei, so Abaya tells his teacher, Neiman Konoi Maris, master dozing off. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? I'm only, no, I'm not sleeping. I'm only dozing. That may no me come a name. I'm only dozing off. And indeed, that's okay because you are awake. Because vitnan nisnam nemu yerchelu nid nemu lo yerchelu, and that's the truth of all the previous generations. That all of them, they're still with us. They're not here. That they're bebechinas. Uh, we don't see them that much, but they're not sleeping. They only dozed off, and therefore they're present with us. Vaiter hapesach achar chatzois. So the second thing we had in the Mishnah is that metames hayudaim vechulei. In other words, says the Gemara ah. And that's not everyone's shita, because Mantana, who's the author? Amr Rabbi Yosef, that's only Rabbi Yosef ben Azariyahu, and the Tanya, based on a Pasuk and Parshas boy. Oh, so Rabbi Yosef ben Azariyah says, it says over here, Balayla Hazeh, and it says, Venemala Halon, regarding... Regarding the Avarti Be'eretz Mitzrayim Balayla Hazeh Makas B'choyro Yisma Lahalon When did it happen? It happened at Chatzois At Ka Af Khan Hazeh Hazeh Gzeda Shava That the mitzvah of eating a Habasar Balayla Hazeh Is only at Chatzois Mido Eirais However, Amalai Rabbi Kiva No Haloi Nemar Regarding the first Seder It says B'chipazayn Chipazayn Taich means in haste But we didn't eat it in haste We were dressed for the road well, but it means ad sha'as chipazin that we ate it until when we started to leave Egypt in haste. Now we started to physically leave Mitzrayim by Aloy Shashachar. We actually left Misukes, let Amsays, Be'etzem Hayyim Azer. But before, before Aloy's, we were not moving, we were still eating the Seder. So Fakent chipazin means that we ate the, the Basar the whole night. I am Cain, my Tamaloimer Balayla. So, as Yochel, you would think, says Rabbi Kiva, that you hate Nechel Kachim by Yoim. You would have thought that you can eat Kachim, in other words, by day. You can eat the Pesach by day. No, Tamaloim Balayla. Balayla who Nechel, but the Ain Nechel Ella by Yoim. Now, the problem is, is that the word Hazeh, since Rabbi Kiva does not subscribe to the Gzeda Shava, Hai Hazeh, my Yavadli, it would have been enough to say that the Achlo Sabasa Balayla. Right, we know until when he him. How do you know you can't eat it by day? Maybe uh, they ate it until Shas Chippazim, but you can eat it by day, right by Layla. But why do you have to have a Hazeh? So if Rabbi Kiva will answer, let me boy lay, lima ute Layla acharu da asam. One might have thought that you can eat it huh, until in the next night as well. Why would we think that we would think so? Because Just like Pesach is Kachum Kalim, and Shlomim is a Kachum Kalim. 
So one would have thought, Af Pesach, Oikim, guys, Lailois, Bemokim, Yomim, and Viehei Nechol, Lishnei Yom, Lishnei Leidus, Liyom Echad. Wow. So to make sure that Yataka can't even eat it in the second night, so for that's why only on this night. And parenthetically, the whole concept of we are minig is that we say halal with the bracha in the shul both nights in Golos, or not just all the first night. I, 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 now, halal in the Haggadah is not a problem because it's a whole different thing. That's shvach. But the halal in the, in the tefillah, that's the question, how do we say halal at night? One of the answers is, is that there is no night by the Seder. It's day. That's the, based on the, on the Gemara. That the night of the Seder is like day. Now, Rabbi Rosa, Rabbi Rosa ben Azariah will tell you that I cannot use the hazeh. Don't forget, if there's a gzeda shava that's not mufna, then we're shivin. So it's not, it's not mufna. It is mufna. I, I already know that Pesach cannot be eaten two nights. Why? Because it says, Loisho Siru ad boike nafke. No nafke ho. So I already know that it, you can't leave anything over until the morning. So the hazeh is mufna. So Rabbi Kiva Amalach, no. I I would have said, my boiker, boiker sheni. That's the whole sugi we had above and the ayin aleph. And, and, and for that, Rabbi Lazar says, no. That kolecha, the cause of boiker, boiker ishen hu. Bottom line is, we have this machloikis, and on, uh, regarding the Pesach, and just like, and just like we had from the story of Abaya and Rabba, that the first din in the Mishnah regarding dozing off, just like the Mishnah speaks it out regarding the Pesach, we apply it equally to the Matzah. So likewise, the Zalbazach is when it comes to the second to this topic, the second part of the Mishnah. The Mishnah was speaking about the carbon Pesach, and we have a machlekes tanoi. So here also we will apply it to the matzah as well. Omarova ah, matzah now, guys, it's important to put this in context. It's good we're learning this all in the same daf. We started a little bit on Kuf Yotas on the base. That, according to the Rajbam, this refers to the Afikoimen. And by the way, we're Mahmar that way. But Rava is speaking about the mitzvah of Matzah. And according to many other Rishonim, the main mitzvah of Matzah is not the way the Rajbam learned the Gemara. It's not the Afikoimen. It's the first Kezayas. So that's very important. It was when Rava is taka applying the same achloikis to matzah. He's referring to matzah of a mitzvah. We're learning the Rashbam, which means that you have to have the afikoimen until midnight. Now, actually, we only do that the first night. The reason why we don't do it the second night is because we don't pask in the way that Rashbam learned this whole sugi, the way we learned it. We understand that the Iker mitzvah is the first kezayis. The first kezayis always has to be eaten before midnight. I asked the Gemara, who needed the Rav? Pshita, kiven the iskash le Pesach, so ke Pesach dami. So the Gemara says, no. Mao de teimah ha afka krom hekesh. It's all the whole dafka is connected to each other. Where did the trader take out matzah from everything else? Guys, we learned this. In Baloyz, it says, al matzah yisum erodim yechlu hu. There we link Pesach with matzah umarer. Gavaldik. And the Rav was the one that learned on, on Ahmed Alev, Oh, that matzah is excluded when it says that the that, that be'er of toichlu matzois means that, um, that the, 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 first of all, only Pesach and matzah together, that's how it began. And that's how we would compare them. But we end up not comparing them. We end up saying that matzah is a standalone mitzvah. So I would have thought that since it's a standalone mitzvah, the matzah of the Seder is not connected at all with the dinam of Pesach. Komash Malan, that when the trader said, Ba'ed of Toichlu Matzois, he wants you to eat the matzah bound, connected to the same rules of the carbon Pesach. It doesn't have to be with the carbon Pesach. Matzah is man as Raisa. But the Chiyadre Kral, the Musakam And therefore, yes, the dinim, the laws of the Pesach, which is that it, whether uh, until Chatzois, that din, Shitas Rablaza ben Azariah, will apply to the mitzvah of Matzah Chevret to be continued.